Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 4 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. Our first topic is the Haber process. The Haber process is an industrial method for making ammonia, an important chemical used in fertilizers and various products. The production of ammonia occurs in an exothermic reaction. Here's the balanced equation. So as you may notice, this is a reversible reaction. The reactants for this process, hydrogen gas, is taken from methane in natural gas. And nitrogen is taken from the air. The hydrogen and nitrogen gas are passed over an ion catalyst which speeds up the reaction without being consumed itself. Ammonia is produced as the main product. Any unreacted hydrogen and nitrogen gases are recycled back into the system. Typical operating conditions include a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, a pressure of approximately 200 atmospheres, and an iron catalyst. Factors such as temperature and pressure affect the rate of reaction, the equilibrium position, safety considerations, and economics. So, these typical operating conditions are chosen to optimize both the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium while also considering safety and economic factors. So, ideally, we need to find a balance between a good rate of reaction and the amount of products that are produced. Let's see why a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is used. In terms of rate of reaction, high temperatures usually speeds up both forward and reverse reactions. In terms of equilibrium position, the forward reaction in the Haber process releases heat, so it's an exothermic reaction. As we previously discussed, when the temperature increases, the equilibrium shifts towards the endothermic reaction, which absorbs heat, while reducing the temperature shifts the equilibrium towards the exothermic reaction, which releases heat. While increasing the temperature typically speeds up a reaction, in the Haber process, it actually favors the backward endothermic reaction to counteract the temperature rise. Remember, the reaction system strives to maintain balance in response to changes. As a result, the equilibrium shifts to the left favoring the formation of more reactants. However, our goal is to maximize the product yield rather than the reactants. Therefore, the temperature can't be too high. The temperature can't be too low also because reducing the temperature makes the reaction rate to be slow. Next, safety considerations for using this temperature. High temperatures increase the risks associated with handling these conditions. And economics, while higher temperatures can increase the rate of reaction, they also can increase production costs. The choice of 450 degrees Celsius balances the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium to achieve an optimal yield of ammonia. 
Next, Y is a pressure of 200 atmospheres used. In terms of rate of reaction, high pressure typically increases both forward and backward reaction rates. In terms of equilibrium position, why is this pressure used? We previously learned that when you increase the pressure, the reaction moves to where there are fewer gas molecules. This happens because the system wants to balance the pressure, so it favours the side with fewer gas particles to reduce it. Because less gas particles means lower pressure. Now, look carefully at the balanced equation of the Haber process. On the reactant side, we have 1 mole of nitrogen gas and 3 moles of hydrogen gas, totalling 4 moles of gas. On the product side, we have 2 moles of ammonia gas. If the pressure is increased, since there are more gas molecules on the reactant side than the product side, the equilibrium will shift to the side with fewer gas molecules to reduce the pressure. Therefore, increasing the pressure will cause the equilibrium position to shift to the right, favouring the formation of ammonia, which is what we need. So ideally, a high pressure is good for this process. However, we must also consider safety and economic factors. Safety considerations. While high pressures are necessary for the reaction, they also increase the risks associated with handling these conditions. Maintaining very high pressures may be dangerous. Economics. While higher pressures can enhance reaction rates and ammonia yield, they also necessitate more energy and specialized equipment, thereby increasing production costs. Expensive equipment and maintenance is required for high pressure operations. Because of these above reasons, the pressure can't be too high. But if the pressure is too low also, the yield of products will reduce because it will favour the backward reaction in order to increase the pressure. In summary, although high pressure is beneficial for the Haber process, a balance must be struck considering safety and economic factors. So 200 atmospheres is considered a Compromise between achieving desired reaction rates and product yield while addressing safety and economic concerns. The use of iron catalyst. Catalysts increase the rate of both the forward and backward reactions. Using a catalyst helps achieve equilibrium faster without the need for a higher temperature thus improving the yield. Remember, catalysts do not affect the equilibrium position. Safety considerations. Using a catalyst is safer compared to increasing the temperature as it eliminates the risks associated with handling high temperatures. Talking about economics, for the Haber process, we've learned that we can't use a temperature that is too high. Therefore, using a catalyst can significantly help achieve equilibrium faster. Using a catalyst is economical because without it, we would need to operate at higher temperatures which can lead to a lower yield in this reaction as discussed earlier due to the favoured backward reaction. Additionally, maintaining higher temperatures is costly. In summary, the typical conditions used in the Haber process are selected to optimize both the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium, taking into account safety considerations and economic factors. Now, let's shift our focus to the contact process. 
the contact process is an industrial method for producing sulfuric acid. The production of sulfuric acid occurs through a series of reactions. One of the key reactions in the contact process involves the conversion of sulfur dioxide SO2 to sulfur trioxide SO3. This reaction is reversible, meaning it can proceed in both the forward and reverse directions. The forward reaction is exothermic. The raw materials used in this process include sulfur dioxide, which can be obtained from various sources such as burning sulfur or roasting sulfide ores, and oxygen, which is typically sourced from the air. In the contact process, the reactants are passed over a vanadium 5 oxide catalyst, which accelerates the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide without undergoing any change itself. Typical conditions for the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide, that is the main stage in the contact process, are a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, a pressure of two atmospheres, and a vanadium 5 oxide catalyst. After sulfur trioxide is created, it goes through additional steps to make the sulfuric acid. Just like the Haber process, typical operating conditions must be chosen to optimize both the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium while also considering safety and economic factors. Let's see why a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is used. High temperatures typically accelerate both forward and reverse reactions. In terms of equilibrium position, increasing the temperature favors the reverse endothermic reaction, favoring the formation of more reactants. Therefore, the temperature can't be too high. The temperature can't be too low also because reducing the temperature makes the reaction rate to be slow. Higher temperatures increase safety risks. Higher temperatures increase production costs. Why is a pressure of two atmospheres used? In case of rate of reaction, even though high pressure typically accelerates both forward and backward reaction rates, let's see what it does to the equilibrium position. Increasing pressure shifts the equilibrium towards the formation of sulfur trioxide, favoring product formation due to the fewer gas molecules on the product side. So, even though it sounds like a high pressure is a good idea for the contact process, to avoid dangers and high costs associated with high pressure, the process is conducted at a pressure of two atmospheres. If the pressure increases too much, sulfur dioxide can turn into a liquid which is not ideal for the reaction. So high pressures are necessary but pose safety risks and require careful handling. While higher pressures can enhance reaction rates and yield, they also increase production costs. In summary, the typical conditions used in the contact process are selected to optimize both the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium considering safety considerations and economic factors. That concludes part 4 of topic 6, Chemical Reactions. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here is a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. 
you may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye.